Supreme Court of the United States decision deals major blow to religious freedom in public schools. Recently, the U.S. Supreme Court cited in favor of a high school coach, Joe Kennedy, in, a, in that his firing from the Bremerton School District violated his First Amendment rights. At the crux of the matter was the school district's refusal to let Kennedy pray on the football field immediately after games. The case pitched the religious freedoms of the coach, who holds a level of power over the student players, against the same rights of the students who didn't want to feel pressured in to participate. One aspect of the case that played in Kennedy's favor was that the Supreme Court in the United States found that he didn't directly force any student to join in his prayers. President and CEO of Americans United for Separation of Church and State, Rachel Laser, reached reacted to the decision stating quote today the court continued its assault on church state separation by falsely describing coercive prayer as personal and stopping public schools from protecting their students religious freedom this decision represents the greatest loss of religious freedom in our country in generations okay i have a lot of comments in this but first, yes. Shahin just Shahin also became a member. Thank you so much, Thank Shahin. Thank you. Um, first of all, before we express our outrage, mm -hmm. can you explain what was the reason why they thought that this is not a violation of the Constitution? And church so religion? let me, I'll, I'll start from the beginning. So about six years ago, Coach Kennedy started praying at the midfield line on the field, like publicly in front of everyone. And the school district, Bremerton, Washington, actually very, I used to, I've gone to, I used to grow up around Bremerton anyways, um, told him, hey, don't pray in front of your students. We don't wanna get sued for violating student religious freedom. And over the course of years, they asked him, hey, please don't do this. Please don't make a spectacle out of this. They even offered him a place where they went above and beyond to try to serve his religious freedoms as well. They said, we can offer you a private place to pray after the games. We're totally fine with that. Just please don't do it like right in front of everyone on our school property right after the game. Um, and Coach Kennedy would encourage other students to join him. He didn't mandate it. He didn't force it but parents of students said that many felt pressured to participate. Otherwise they wouldn't seem like they were being part of the team, right? They weren't being a team player if they didn't participate or they were being left out and excluded if they didn't participate or they got that feeling. Um, and he would invite media to these instances where he was praying on the field and it, just yeah he 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 refused to listen to the school district in their requests because they expressed that they were trying to protect the religious freedoms of their student students and avoid students suing them for his actions basically and um so it was time for him to get rehired and they refused to rehire him because they were like you are not following the um, what the district has requested of you. So we're not, we, do, we, we don't want to work with you again. And he sued, made it up to the ninth circuit appellate court in San Francisco and the federal court in San Francisco ruled against him. They appealed, it went before the Supreme court. And then this time they ruled in his favor and they're making the excuse that it's because he didn't tell students that they had to join him that he didn't, didn't force it and that it is quote unquote private prayer. But I included a photo in the show notes. If you look at how he was doing this, there's nothing about this that was private. Um, that is specifically why I asked you uh, what the argument for it is, because I remember the Supreme Court of United States describing this they say the reason why they gave him th that this is allowed, this, what you're looking at, the Supreme that looks Court like an United evangelical States. revival. The Supreme Court of United States described this as private, private prayer. 
and the reasoning they had for why this is this is okay this man this was a public school correct yes okay so this man as his position within a public school paid by american taxpayers right as a government employee okay as a government employee He's telling people to, within his position as a government employee, is telling people to pray. And the Supreme Court of the United States is saying that this is allowed because this was a private prayer session. Are they, like, are, I don't understand. Like, are they trolling us? What is this? What does this mean? How is this? This doesn't make any sense. And also, what is he suing for? What is the challenge? They didn't even fire him. There was no firing. What is he complaining about? He just asked for his contract to be renewed and they don't, they didn't renew his contract. You were not fired. They don't have to renew your contract. They the one cannot renew your contract for any reason. They were like, I just don't, they could be like, this is not a violation of anything. Even, even if there was a law in the United States that says that you cannot fire people for reasons like this, this would not apply to it because he was not fired. They just decided not to continue working with him. It was a con. It was not an employee. This was contract. It doesn't make any sense. I don't understand what's happening. I think this is just like the Supreme Court is just like going like the new the the. The conservative judges are going mask off at this point. They're like, we could just bring, like, we just, we're just going to make this into a Christian country. And we're just have so much power that we're just not going to, we're just going to like go full on dictatorial mode. And just, you guys just can't do anything about it. I think that's what's just happening. Yeah. I don't know, so understand. here's, here's some, the background of their explanation of why they decided this. Um, Justice Neil uh, Gorsuch, writing for the majority in the ruling, declared, quote, the Constitution and the best of our traditions counsel mutual respect and tolerance, not censorship and suppression for religious and non-religious views alike. Gorsuch noted that the co coach, quote, prayed during a period when school employees were free to speak with a friend, call for a reservation at a restaurant, check an email, or attend to other personal matters. And while his students were, quote, otherwise occupied. So it would be wrong to treat everything public school teachers say and do as speech subjected to government control, he wrote. If that were the case, a school could fire a Muslim teacher for wearing a headscarf in the classroom or prohibit a Christian aide from praying quietly over her lunch in the cafeteria, he wrote. Okay, the, these are, they know this is not comparable because the actual comparison, they're avoiding, oh, so close, but not quite so very close but i think they're not taking the next step because they know the actual comparison would be the, the same thing here but an islamic prayer okay the the actual comparison would be would not be like somebody like just doing a private prayer in school before they eat by themselves without suggesting to other students hey like hey like join me if you want oh jimmy you want to join me in prayer like that would be comparable okay not like oh i'm just gonna do my own prayers quietly before i eat okay that's not comparable okay if you want to actually have a real comparison to this islamically then tell me if you would be okay with a muslim teacher telling everybody like hey let's come and thank allah for the just wonderful game that we had hey jimmy you're gonna join are you gonna pray to allah no okay jimmy jimmy's not gonna join hey with you well with tom tom pray to allah like would you agree with parents or and all other people who are supporting this would be okay with this? Hey, Islamically, maybe you're okay with that. What about Satan? Satan's mother. Okay. I can't swear on this show. Okay. Let's bring Satan to this. Let's have a prayer to Satan. Where is the satanic temple? Because the same people would all of a sudden understand the entire point of secularism. If you say that, Hey, we're going to pray to Satan for this wonderful game that we had. But no pressure to anybody, and we're just noticing the people who are joining the prayer session and the people who are not. The teacher is noticing it. The people you are you with the team or are you not with people don't understand how much 
being part of the team and being going with the flow is important when especially in school okay especially this is like yeah especially to teenagers like fitting in or fitting or not fitting in it's the psychological Im implications of that like people are like oh you could just not join in have you never been a goddamn teenager do you mm -hmm. know like the pain of not fitting in is more than physical torture people do not commit suicide over physical torture but people do commit suicide over being ostracized or people not fitting in with the community or feeling alone okay this is the amount of psychological trauma that you're putting teenagers under by making them like oh everybody joined in the prayer station except timmy timmy had an issue timmy doesn't love jesus timmy has a problem with jesus we love jesus timmy doesn't do you understand how much of a brainwashing what you're into what the door you're opening to the to if this is basically this is all the excuses you need to use pub publicly funded school system as a way to brainwash children and bring them back to christianity this is this is what i was telling you in the earlier news right these people are losing the demographic battle but they're winning the political battle and if they win the political battle and they use it to dominate the school system eventually they could use it to win back the demographic battle you can't lose this game guys all the progress you think you have made you could lose it progress cannot is not certain you could lose everything we've gained in secularism in rights in freedoms in the separation of church and state all of this can be gone it's people think that once you gain some rights it's just you just got to stay there right when you gain the rights now it's your job to defend them and guard them you can lose all of it if you're not careful and again the secularists and the atheists these people are not as motivated as these christians and the religious people are you're not as mobilized you're not as united you guys are in the the level of infighting you guys are talking canceling. about canceling each other over like the most insanely like this is what you get over like oh like you you, you had this joke uh, five years ago over here so you're not part of us anymore this is what you get for all from all this infighting all the woke culture means that the rights that actually matter you're going to lose all of it when you're not when you're united you think the you think the conservatives and the right wingers and the christians you think they don't forgive each other for little things but they have their eye on the big on picture the they know what they've been uh, pushing to bring prayer back into public schools for decades decades they again yeah they they know what actually matters and that's why they don't cancel each other over every small little disagreement okay this is why it's important to focus on the most important rights that you want and stay united as liberals okay anyways um yeah no this is completely outrageous so one thing that i can say is that i would encourage people to go support organizations like the freedom from religion foundation as well as americans united for the separation of church and state both are amazing organizations that put a lot of their emphasis into literally writing briefings that go before the Supreme Court, like FFRF wrote a briefing to the Supreme Court in this case. Um, and um, Americans United for the Separation of Church and State have said that they are preparing, um, uh, yeah, here's a quote. Uh, Laser promised that Americans United will continue to defend and protect religious freedoms, which is, um, wait, no, that's not what I wanted to read. Okay, basically, they've said that they're, like, preparing already. They're preparing what they can do legally to push back against things like this. So, if you want to see people push back against decisions like this and fight to, you know, get, keep prayer out of schools, stop, maintain the religious freedom of students um go support organizations and the work like that they do over there darko is saying it'll probably take generations to fix this mess yeah it's horrific um it's so depressing oh actually that reminds me armin i have a video by andrew seidel about this decision that i wanted to show okay
Um, I just want to address this. Muhammad is saying unite over behind secularism, not atheism. I completely agree with this. When I say atheist activists, I say I'm talking about people who are motivated to uh, fight for secular activism. Okay, so atheist activists should be... You, so when it comes to uh, issues like this, atheist activists can join other secular activists, okay, and not use the fact that these other secular activists are, are not atheists. They shouldn't um, use that as an excuse not to uh, not to unite with them. Okay, I'm just calling upon atheist activists because I know atheist activists are also most of them are also secular activists. Okay, um, you don't you can still do your atheist activism. Um, you shouldn't avoid doing your atheist activism. Okay, do your atheist activism, but on these issues, unite with other secular activism, even if they don't agree with you on your atheism. I agree with that. So, um, anyway, so let me let me what the video? Let me split the video. Yeah. So sorry, my dog is crying because she needs petting. My other, my Kelly dog. So I'm trying to also give her some attention. Wait, no, you're going to need to refresh the page and then unmute because it's Instagram and you can't start from the beginning. I know. It's so stupid. So, so let annoying. me actually refresh the page now. Oh, my God. And unmute. Ooh. Oh. This rogue U.S. Supreme Court just did it again. It continued its assault on the separation of church and state and on our rights in yet another opinion, this time in Kennedy versus the Bremerton School District. The court falsely described this coach's coercive prayer as private, and it prevented the school district from protecting the religious freedom of its students. Does that look like a private prayer to you? This decision is one of the greatest losses for true religious freedom in our lifetime, in a generation. This court is ignoring religious freedom unless it is the religious freedom of conservative Christians. That's what we saw last week in the main case. That's what we saw today. Nobody else's religious freedom matters unless you happen to be a conservative Christian. That is weaponizing religious freedom. And it is a result of a crusade that's been going on for years backed by a billion dollar shadow network and it is what we are trying to fight against. One of the through lines through all the awful opinions being imposed on this country by this rogue court is religious freedom, the weaponization of religious freedom and the erosion of the separation of church and state, that founding American principle, that central tenet of our democracy. What we need right now is a national recommitment to the separation of church and state. This rogue U.S. Supreme Court. That was it, right? Yep. I wanted Said to make sure. Yeah, oh, like for that. those who don't know, Andrew Seidel, who we just listened to, is a constitutional attorney and the vice president of strategic communications for Americans United for the Separation of Church and State. So he is one of the top like secular activist lawyers who I go to listen to to break down these kinds of decisions. Um, so definitely go check out his books, his work, his YouTube channel. Twitter is very good at explaining these things and emphasizing their importance. Um, Sheikh B is saying this is depressing effort and worst part is U.S. has an impact all over the world. Yes, this is what we need to think about. You know, people say that when America sneezes, the rest of the world catches a cold. Like it or not, we set the tone for a lot of stuff that happens globally. And that's something I consider when big stories like this happens um basically what the only thing we can do to try to fix the situation is we have to expand the judiciary if you feel powerless we need to put our political organizing into expanding the judiciary um so that we can get this like catholic ultra conservative majority that diminish their power so that that is its own massive political struggle. Um, and we need politicians who are going to fight for that hard. And just to confirm that, just by like, for example, one country, if you want to use it as an example, like I really agree with this comment here, because um, you can see for uh, because United, countries like United States are used as an example of 
the highest level of achievement, you know, come when it comes to secularism or free speech or stuff like that. You know, I know sometimes unjustifiably, right? With free speech, justifiably, but with secularism, maybe unjustifiably. But um, people are like, this is what, this is the best, okay? This is how, what we can achieve. And when the best is this, people can excuse their violation of secularism by saying like, even in the United States, and then they finish their sentence, right? So they're like, this, that's the ideal, that's the highest, like, so if they fall short of that, they're like, it's okay, because that's, you know, we're falling maybe just a little bit short of it. Even the extreme version, which is the United States, they're allowing stuff like this. And the example I was gonna use for, uh, use is like, in Iran, a lot of people, when they're um, defending certain, you know, rules, they're like, well, look, even in this country, they allow this. Even, for example, uh, even France, for example, they said like, so for free speech, they don't go with the United States because they know the United States has really good free speech, right? But when it comes to um, something that offends people and then they get arresting, uh, arresting for it, they're like, oh, look, even in France, people could get arrested for burning the flag, right? So, but when it comes to secularism, they're like, oh, look, even in the United States, they don't allow this and this and this based on religious grounds. So religions should be in, in politics. So... But I'm saying that this is not a loss for the United States. This is a loss for the entire planet, right? When the best countries that we, you know, the countries that are supposed to be ahead of everybody else, uh, when they when they lose, everything else in the world takes goes one step backward, a huge leap backward. Um, but anyways, do you think the Satanic Temple could get involved in all of this? Because I want to see. Christians. Well, I will already presume that they've been looking at a way to get involved this left, right, and center ever since they heard that the court is going to take up this case. So, yeah, we'll see. I hope. I'm looking forward to a decade of satanic prayers. Like, I'm looking forward to, for there's going to be a major sat uh, satanic panic. Uh, I'm hoping, you know, because I want Christians to see, like, uh, the fruits of their labor coming back at them. And then mm -hmm. like, oopsies. Yeah. But it's gonna, it's gonna. That would mandate that there has to be teachers who are willing to start praying to Satan in public at their school property. <laughs> like, yeah. I don't know how many individuals are willing to do that for the sake of ultimately picking up a court case that they can take upwards. You know. Well, what That's I know what is commit. that as much as we have teenagers, okay, there are many teenagers who need to fit in, okay, but there's another group of teenagers that their entire identity is defined based on rebellion okay so i'm hoping that they do not disappoint and they continue to define their identity by becoming by we we're going to get a generation of rebels defined because of the, these violations of fundamental rights okay so the, the, this what we're seeing right now in front of our eyes is the birth of very aggressive and passionate future uh, atheist activists, okay? Because atheist activism dies when a religion is not that big of an issue. But I'm just thinking like there are a lot of atheist activists um, coming down, coming from the United States that haven't even been born yet. Like we're creating environments where atheist activists come out of it. So we are, we will, I don't know where Atheist Republic is going to be at that point but i will but I'm, imagine like me and susanna will be like really old and we both have like really dark gray hair and we know what we're going to talk like a whole bunch of like young atheist activists are coming up and like we called it like we knew that this environment that is being created is going to create people like you and when we were talking about it you weren't even born yet right so we're, <laughs> we're going to have them under they're going to be channel members and they're going to be coming up and we're going to talk to them this might be <laughs> Yeah, good time to be a rebel. Hey guys, if you're a fan of Blasphemy and Sexy Callie, you know, like me, then you need to be sure to subscribe to our newsletter. Link in the description below. Because if you subscribe, we will send you a free copy of our Blasphemous Art ebook. And let me tell you, it is the tastiest Blasphemy that you can find anywhere available today. And we are so generous with our blasphemy that we continue to send you more blasphemy every week. So make sure to subscribe. Link in the description below.